Hi guys, me again. Um, I'm gonna dedicate this video to the people who think I'm a stupid idiot. If you're a subscriber, you're more than welcome to hang around just for your amusement. Uh, if you've called me a stupid idiot, maybe we've met uh, in the comment section of one of those scientific videos and you disagree with my ideas. You think I'm stupid for thinking a few things. Uh, I got a list right here. Uh, maybe you think I'm stupid for saying a proton and electron are physically connected. Or maybe you think I'm stupid for thinking gravity is not a field, but an interaction between gravitons and nucleons and so on. So uh, I got this entire list here and you can just check whether you think it's stupid of me to think so or not. We we'll come back at that later, but that's the way I want to uh, I want you to give the opportunity to check out whether I am indeed that stupid or not. You already uh, came to the conclusion I am stupid. You're a scientist, I guess. You're, you're, uh, you're working for CERN or for Family Lab or you're working for NASA. Uh, you're a teacher at the university. Maybe you're a student at the university, but you are a real top-notch scientist and I'm the stupid idiot. Okay, let's that's where we are. I respect you. I respect your knowledge. I'm not dissing you. I'm not going to uh, hurt your feelings here. I'm just giving you the opportunity to see how stupid I really am, practically confirming your first conclusion about my mental state. So, um, on the other hand, I think you're a religious person. Now you might think, no, I'm not religious, I'm a scientist, and religion and scientists just don't mix, right? I mean, uh, religious people are a bit stubborn, they, they frantically hold on to, to uh, a view of this world which isn't real, because your scientists, the, one, the ones you defend, they have shown Darwin how, how we, humans and apes have a common ancestor, uh, at this line of the other way around apes turning into human beings. Um, well, when it comes to uh, the tiny bits, when it comes to shaping the universe, it's not God who just in seven days created this earth and put everything on it, now is it? No way, it's the Big Bang, puts, and there everything was. It's confirmed and checked over by your scientists, your super smart, king of the hill scientist. So, I'm sure if you're a religious person, if you still believe in God, that's a bit sad, isn't it? Well, I don't think that's sad at all, but I do think you are the same. I do think you are religious as well, and not the least religious, very religious. So we have a thing here, you think I'm an idiot, I think you're religious. I'm gonna see who's right, who's wrong, by your standards. I'm the idiot, you're the scientist, so you place the final verdict. Um, so, um, up front, I want to make sure that you aren't biased. If you're preoccupied with me, you think uh, I am an, uh, an idiot, it's going to be influencing the outcome. We don't want to influence the outcome. You're a scientist, you want to start with a clean sheet, uh, un unprejudiced, just put your anger to me uh, on a sidetrack, stupid idiot goes there, I'm just a neutral guy. Not stupid, not not smart, just neutral. I think that's the best scientific scientific uh, angle to look at this problem, don't you think? So, um, so I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. Um, what I do is I create a universe. That's what I'm doing. A big universe containing everything. Uh, it contains life, death, flux, politics, time, uh, uh, biology, uh, and of course uh, science and part of it, uh, crucial part of it, is quantum physics. And I guess that's where we have the arguments, right? Right. So that's what I'm doing, and you might think that's stupid to try and create the entire, to try to map out the entire universe. Well, I don't think it's crazy. I think it's a nice chance, uh, a great pastime, a great way to, to well, I go entertain myself, I reckon so, yeah. So, uh, where we are now, we have this big thing, and uh, part of it is, is, is politics. You got seven chapters, nice number seven, right? Seven chapters. They're all, all interconnected. Don't take seven too harsh. It's just, it's one thing, of course, but it, 
in general, you can see about seven disciplines with it. And one of them is science, including chemistry and uh, physics. And of that physics thing, you have uh, star drive explaining uh, the universe. And of that star drive expla explanation, there's one small part. It's called the Van Kemenade Atom Model. And those are examples of this model, of my model. It's registered. It's my model. Um, pretty part of it, too, actually. But I guess in your eyes it's stupid to think you can create most atoms because nobody can, so why does a single person can do that? Huh? Impossible. But well, uh, let's start off with my test, with which uh, you know uh, you think calling me stupid isn't insulting, but it it, it means I failed. I somehow failed to to to, to well. To make you see otherwise, maybe, or I failed to, to, to explain my view on science. So don't worry about that. There's nothing personal, right? Just how you talk to people. To another. If you not agree with someone, you, you call them stupid or idiot. It doesn't mean anything, right? It's not like we really think I am dumb. I hope so. But hey, we're going to check that out. You're a scientist. We're going to check that out in a scientific manner, scientific fashion, how stupid I really am. So here it goes. Um, I promise you, it gets worse before it gets better. In a nutshell, I'm going to explain how the universe works. But I think is gravity. That's of course one of the uh, how do you call them pillars. One of the essential things. Gravity is essential. It's, it's strange too. It's an anomaly. We had, we're, we live in a world of diffusion. So how can things attract? It doesn't make any much sense. So I was thinking, and I thought. What mechanism can I think? I think the universe is just a simple mechanism. What mechanism is there that can create the force of gravity? So I thought, suppose we have a sea of gravitons all around, called the ether. And then we have nucleons, smallest particle of mass, a nucleon. And those things are spinning in space. And they're made out of three quarks, as you can see, three quarks. And they have an interaction. I, I say they swim against the incoming stream of gravitons. Because as you know, as a scientist, if an, uh, a graviton bounces off a surface, it comes out of the direction of that offset surface. So that's how a nucleon detects a graviton. That's how you get an incoming stream of gravitons from the Earth, from the Moon, from major uh, masses, or small masses if you will, doesn't matter at all. You always get this nucleon, of a, this, this graviton bouncing back from the surface hitting the nucleon, and there's some magical things going on. If you are a subscriber, you know what I mean with that. But, you know, I'm not going to talk about that. Just remember, I think this is a nucleon spinning thing. Doesn't matter which one spins. It's, maybe it spins as a whole, doesn't matter. And we have gravitons. They interact, and that's gravity, a mechanical interaction, a working by Newton's laws. That's all. So. Um, I'd say for now, take a piece of paper. Uh, please bear with me. Take a piece of paper, amuse me, and write down. Um, I thought of, uh, I started off with thinking you are religious. Uh, just write down you're not religious. It's uh, stupid of me to think so. If, you think, if you're not religious and you think I'm stupid for saying so, write it down. That's one. And then the second one, write down that I think the universe is a mechanical interaction. Not a field, not another curvature of space time, mechanical interaction. Write down that you think that's either stupid or not. You don't have to write down that stupid or not, that's it. A cross or, or uh, a check box, it doesn't matter how what, what you say, V or right or a cross. That's all you need to do. It's simple, right? So, you have the concept of gravity, and then we have the nucleon, because I know this concept of gravity now, I know how a nucleon looks like, I know how. I know the details about gravitons too. I know exactly how small they are, uh, how uh, what their mass is. I know how many uh, balls of spring, in fact. I know the, the number of coils. All those details I know. That must be funny or crazy too. It yeah, well doesn't matter. We start out with this nucleon, and I say mass is created. Atoms are created by simply blindfoldedly compressing those nucleons together. And what you get is, well, you have these things, and this is a, a nucleon, and 
as you know, they morph into protons, which is, ooh, almost broke, motherfucker, which is no more than stretching out one of the spinning electrons. Because let's say this thing is made out of six electrons uh, or gravitons. Graviton and electron are in my book the same thing. Sounds crazy in your book. I know it doesn't comply with anything you know, but still that's what I say. I think it's the same thing. Come back to that later. You can say how stupid is it stupid or not. Come back to that later. You can check those boxes. Right? So, but now, bear with me. We have nucleon and we have a proton with a bigger circumference. Thus, a great speed. Thus, we see this as an electron. So, compress those nucleons and this happens in the stars where you get hydrogen compressed together, creating um, helium. And helium, as you can see, has four of those nucleons, two protons, two neutrons, and they are compressed so tightly that they can't spin individually. You have the entire thing as one chunk of matter spinning as a whole, and that's helium. Another example of a less, uh, a less strong compression, a little mild compression, is this. And this is uh, six lithium. And uh, they're not so far compressed, everything is gridlock now. Uh, as you can see, they're all made out of the same. These are six of those. Nucleons, very simple, right? I think the universe is a very simple thing. It isn't far that complicated. As you might think, uh, reading all those mathematical formulas, I know it's very simple. You got this, and you can see six of those make up for six lithium, and it's an open structure. In case of six lithium, the blue ones make up for a framework, an atomic crystal, if you will, and the other ones spin around that crystal, being neutrons. Well, knowing anything about science, you know that a neutron wants to become a proton, which is a bigger orbit for one of the ele electrons. And as you can see, sometimes they can be in each other's way and therefore some of those protons are forced to remain neutrons or if you have a bunch of neutrons, some can turn into protons and some cannot. Because there's not enough space for all of them to be protons and still spin. So that's what you get with atoms. So two different atoms, you get the gridlock ones and you get the open structures, the spinning ones, spinning atoms and grid, uh, gridlock atoms. So let's start off. Um, I'm going to use numbers uh, provided by your scientists, provided by your heroes, provided by, um, oh, I don't know who, who, who they are. I just, when you read the internet, you know the number of protons per shield, 2, 8, 18, uh, 32, 50, 72, 98. You know them by heart, don't you? Well. That's one thing, and of course, around the internet, you will find the atomic masses. You will find these periodic tables of elements, and every element has a certain atomic weight. And uh, so, if I can make atoms, uh, if I can just compress those nucleons I made, and I, I, if I can create atoms which comply with the weight and also comply with the number of protons in the outer shield. Uh, I think I'm pretty close, aren't I? Yeah, well, let's go on. We're going to start off with a little atom model. This is, you can uh, recognize the diamond shape. This is carbon. And carbon is made out of, you can see it, 12 Q-tips. Uh, that's another thing. Um, this is made out of, this is a full size model, I can simplify those models. Whenever I have, uh, say this is the second shield, um, if I want to create a third shield, a third electron shield, I can just add these kind of things. They land on top. And what are they made of? This, this is four part, it's made out of five nucleons. And Here's one, bigger, one, two, three, four. The blue ones are again structure. Uh, this one on top does not spin, it's gridlocked and it doesn't spin, but it holds 
the other four, which in turn can spin around uh, in a co uh, conjunction with each other. So, well, that's the K, I guess. Um, we also have tripods, and a tripod is the same thing, only it has four legs. The one on top, this one, again, is grid locked, but it only has three of those. Uh, sticking to it, which can again in conjunction spin around with it. Uh, so that's how I built my atoms. I'm starting from scratch uh, um, so with, with this helium thing. You have the bigger scale helium. Here you are, bigger scale. This is the small simplified model using Q tips. And I'm going to add those. Uh, Q-tips, first shield, second shield, and then I'm going to add another, uh, I'm going to let more of these on it, creating the third shield and so on. Now, keep in mind that this universe isn't created by those shiny sweatshops. Uh, it's made by chance. It's not made by someone who said, well, if you want to uh, uh, make uh, atoms, you have to comply with all those laws. You have to comply with, with uh, well, the number of uh, maximum protons in the outer shields, of course, 2, 8, 18. Uh, if you don't, you're going to get hit. The, 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 the supervisor walking around, oh, hey, you're going to get a fire because you made a mistake. You put down 18 instead of, uh, that's 18 is for the third shield, and then you're only working on the, the, the second shield. Put 18, 8 for the second, not 18. It's not like that, of course. I mean, <laughs> well, I might be stupid, but it must be made by chance, the universe, by, as I said, simply compressing nucleons. And the fun part is with these nucleons, if you compress them into atoms, it doesn't matter which one is a neutron and which one is a proton, because the difference is marginal. There's a very little difference. One shoots out. The proton has just a bit more energy. That's the difference. So it is the same, in fact. And they can turn into each other, which makes it possible to create helium. Because it doesn't matter which one is where. This one remains a neutron, and this one becomes a proton. And if you look at an open structure like 6 lithium, same thing. It doesn't matter which one is makes it for the structure. It can be the yellow one as well, or the red one. doesn't matter. It's the same. Three quarks. Quarks are all the same. They only have different flavors because they have a different state of energy. So, a very nice example of nuclear. A very nice example of six lithium. But of course you disagree because I am the stupid motherfucker and you're the, the smart, top-notch scientist. So you disagree with me, of course. doesn't matter. Feel free to not disagree. Feel free to, to say, oh, well, that makes a bit of sense, and maybe that's right. So now we're going to start out with these models. I'm going to explain them to you step by step. And it's important for me, and it's very important for you as well. Because we want to discover, am I stupid? Are my subscribers stupid for following my things, following my videos? Are you stupid for following Einstein and CERN? Or should you maybe change your ideas? So I think it's important for you too. You want to be on top. You want to be in control of this planet. You want to be in control of the things you know. You want to be in control, in control of your environment. So you have to know everything about your environment. It's, it's, it's a masculine thing. It's, it's very manly, actually. But if you're a woman, you're more than welcome. Uh, and uh, I don't think men and women are really different. They are just stereotypes. And there are all kinds of in-between. And maybe on the outside of that too. So it's not like that. It's not black and white thing, not at all. Um, and women. But then start with this is the benchmark. And um, I'm gonna take this little don't mind, this little paper with it me. This is carbon, as I said, and you know carbon is made out of 12 nucleons. This its weight is 12 U. It is of course these numbers are provided by your scientist. I doubt you disagree with these, right? Carbon, 12 views, it's, it's the benchmark. You can count them 12 nucleons. So that's quite a right. But I say 
that it's a mechanical interaction. I say gravity is a mechanical interaction. So this on top and that, the two tripods, two or three sided pyramids, and those tripods, as we discovered, the one on top is gridlocked. It doesn't spin at all. It only holds the other ones in position and those other ones are spinning. So I, my stupid idea is to only count the spinning ones of this thing. And that's nine. You get three on top here, three on the other side, spinning, and these ones, those are these, as we see here, spinning around their axis. So that's a spinning nucleon compared to a gridlocked nucleon. So I say the spinning nucleons make up for that weight of 12 U's, which brings one spinning nucleon to one and a third U, because in total I have to get a 12. So you follow uh, mainstream science, you say, well, I'm going to count the number of nucleons. If you follow me, I'm saying you can just count the number of spinning nucleons and the, the spinning nucleons who are also exposed to the outer world. Because I say the graviton is an object of, 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 of a certain size and it can swim through atoms it can swim in between atoms no problem but if it hits an atom it only can interact with the outer spinning and falling outer spinning nucleons it cannot interact uh, with uh, the ones within because they are shielded by every next shield so that means i only count uh, to, to, uh, for gravity, for the weight of an atom, I only count the number of spinning nucleons. I have uh, three, uh, how do you call it, three, three different ones, three different values, as, as, you, as you might. They are either spinning or gridlocked, and uh, to be more precise, to get a, a more, more precise uh, outcome, they are either spinning, gridlocked, or semi gridlock semi-spinning uh, oh no that's wrong i'm sorry yeah the gridlock of spinning fuck you this is shit yeah i just um so the spin doesn't happen it's about uh you either spin i'm sorry you either spin or you don't spin so you either spin or you gridlock huh? he's gridlocked spinning or spinning and this little four pot, which is a building block you can use to add those shields. A building block. You can see these are we're spinning, this one is gridlock. So you have gridlock and spinning nucleons, but about obscurity, that's why I was a little of a, uh, off now. About obscurity, they either are obscured, not obscured, or half obscured. I'm not going to say you're 10% obscured, 20% obscured. No, that's bull. That would be, uh, then I could influence the outcome. And I don't, I don't want to doctor or, or the, uh, the numbers. I don't want to try to fool you. I want to be honest here. Open and honest, okay? So the tenth, uh, we have this benchmark. And now we have another one. It looks similar. It's oxygen, but, all, but oxygen has two four-sided pyramids. Uh, the total number Oxygen has a total number of uh, nucleons, uh, which is 16. You can count them. You got one in the middle. You have this. Uh, oh, come on, this thing in the middle, which is uh, helium, and then you have a shield added, a few four pots on top of them, and then there's a base. So you have two pyramids, two four-sided pyramids, and a base. Uh, the number of nucleons is 16, so oxygen weighs 16 U's by your scientist. Now, what I say is, no, it's not true. I only count the spinning, the spinning ones, which means 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is 12. 12 spinning ones are 12. 12, but 12 with 30% makes 16 U's, right? Because we agreed, one spinning, in my, in my system, one spinning nucleon is one and a third. It, it compares to one and a third use. So I have to add 30% every time. So counting the spinning nucleons on the outside, adding 30% is 
getting the way. I'm going very consequent with this. I'm not going to fool you. I'm not going to change the rules uh, as I go. No, very consequent. This is the second shield. The second shield, right? And so I go to the third shield. And the third shield, the completed third shield is Argon. You know, the fun thing about um, using these shields is they're benchmarks. Uh, I cannot. Uh, create each shield, all each shield, and then say, well, I'm going to stop halfway because it favors the numbers. No way. I'm not going to cheat you. I'm going to fool you. I'm honest and open to you. I have to complete a shield and then determine the weight and the number of protons. I cannot stop halfway to favor the numbers. And uh, oh, maybe you have this. we're scientists here. We're not going to fool each other, are we? Well, it's your scientist. I'm the idiot. Okay. So, um, argon. So I say that oxygen and oxygen expands into argon. It com becomes argon by landing these tripods on it, shielding the previous shield, shielding oxygen itself. So that's how shields are made. And the fun th thing about landing these tripods or four pods is it doesn't matter whether it's a four pod or a tripod you land because if it's a four pod and the fourth can't find any foothold it will snap off so it doesn't matter and if it's a three pod on, on a uh, position for four pod four, four legs doesn't matter the three pod is stable in itself just a matter of time before another individual independent nucleon uh, lands and be so making it indeed a four part. So the three part landing on a like argon, you get one, two, three, four positions. Three part can land there, no problem. After a while, another Q tip will emerge here, landing there. So it doesn't matter how many it has, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. And that is of course what nature is, it's chance. You cannot Nature can't say, oh, wait, we're going to make argon, let's take three pots. No, they, they, they just progress that mass together, creating argon. So, huh? It's not, not, as I said, it's not a sweatshop, not a tiny sweatshop making atoms. It, it's just chance making, making them. We're argon here. Argon. So we got oxygen, argon, third completed shield. You can find uh, that in, in your, per, uh, your system, uh, the completed shield, argon has 18 uh, spinning protons and it has a weight of about 40. So, um, weight about 40. So, let's see. I want to determine the weight of argon by your numbers. The weight is 40. I have a list here. That's what I'm checking out. Right? I have a list here with uh, the weight your scientists say, which I guess you defend, so you say, these are the weights of helium for oxygen 15.99, argon 39.95, and so forth. So I have those numbers, you can find them on the other. They are the genuine atomic weights, not the atomic mass, that's a different thing. They are the atomic weights. So, and of course, these are the ones which are mine, and they coincidentally are the same. Because if you look at argon, we're gonna see Count those spinning nucleons, one, two, three, four, five, six, gives us 12. Bottom side, one, two, three, three, 12. 24 spinning nucleons, but wait. As I said, I discriminate between the spinning nucleons uh, uh, inside, the spinning nucleons, which are totally obscured, which do not interact with gravitons, and the ones who are partially obscured, partially interact with gravitons. A graviton can easily interact with the blue ones over here. It can, uh, it cannot interact anymore with the ones in the middle, but it can partly interact. You can see these shine through the yellow oxygen uh, framework, the, the, the oxygen crystal shines through. A little graviton can interact with those, but little because it's shielded off by the blue argon, the third shield. So I have 24 blue ones spinning around, making up for its wave. And these are half obscured, the yellow ones are half obscured, which, yeah, 12, half obscured makes 6, so I have 24 
plus 6 makes how much? 24 and 6 makes 30. And there we go again. I have 24. I'm adding 30% because one U, yeah, one spinning nucleon makes up for one and a third U. So argon, 24 spinning, 30% makes 12 U's. And the other ones of oxygen have obscured a half times 12 makes 6 plus 30% makes 8. Combined makes 4 U. Or you can also first add them together, say 24 and 6 makes 30. And then at 30% doesn't change the outcome is the same doesn't mean, mean you can go this way you can do that go that way outcome is 40 use but that's a second shield accidentally complying with what I said I said oxygen weighs you say it weighs 16 15.99 I say indeed it weighs 16 argon weighs almost 40 I say indeed it weighs 40 it's a rough estimate I only use 50% obscured not obscured or uh, entirely obscured, or shielded, I guess it's a better word than this.